Stand and finance committee is now resumed. Parliament, we started at 1 30. Um, what time would be a June 50? Whip, I would have expected you all would have settled all that. You know, um, so maybe if you all haven't settled it, maybe you're not having tea. I don't know. Wasn't that all of that discussed? Well, we didn't discuss the time for tea, but maybe we can say tea can be taken at. at at 4 30, 5? 5? Is that okay? Madam Chair, we did not discuss that. I had really thought, given that it's Standing Finance Committee, that we would flow in and out for tea. But if at this point the opposition would like to suggest the time, we would have no difficulty. I would like to suggest 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. And also, Madam Chair, just uh, for your own appreciation in discussion with the leader of government business, we have decided to do all eight heads today on day one, which is our agenda from the Ministry of Finance to the last head of Ministry of Communication. Um, and keeping what the leader of government is at a day consists of 10 hours. So we are prepared to go 10 hours in day one today, from today. So I hope all the technical people from the different ministries are called. Okay, so. Honourable members, in accordance with Standing Order 45 1, the speaking time in Standing Finance Committee shall not exceed five minutes on each intervention. Each minister will be invited to make a brief five minute opening statement on the ministry or department's priority areas for the upcoming head. Procedure for each head. Honorable members, the procedure for each head of expenditure shall be as follows. One, the head and the amount to be appropriated will be announced by me as chairman. Two, the minister will then be invited to make a brief opening statement. Three, the chairman will then propose the question that the sum proposed stand part of the schedule. For each head of expenditure, I will, for each head of expenditure, I will call the subhead followed by the item. I will not call the sub-items. Discussions can ensue on the item called or the relevant sub-item and clarifications sought. Once the committee moves to another subhead, questions from a previous subhead will not be entertained. Once the committee moves to another <coughs> subhead, questions from a previous subhead will not be entertained. Five, the chairman will repeat the procedure for the development program. Six, once this is concluded, the chairman will then put the question that the sum stand part of the schedule. Seven, the procedure will be repeated for each head of expenditure. And so that I am certain that I understood what was agreed, the meeting will be suspended at 5.40 and resume at 5.30. And we shall continue until we are completed with the Ministry of Communications. Yes? Yes, ma'am, but just to, to reiterate, but no longer than 10 hours. Ten hours from the start of the finance committee, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, members, uh, Member for Princess Tong, Member for Port of Spain South, and so on. I believe Member for Point of Pair and the Member for Aruka Maloney have hammered out on the hour 
we have taken into account our collective interests, how we shall proceed. All right, so we at Head 18, Ministry of Finance. We at page 76, draft estimate, details of estimate of the current expenditure. Head 18, Ministry of Finance, 5 billion, 885 million, 96,330 dollars. I will now invite the Minister of Finance to make a brief opening statement, not exceeding five minutes. Minister of Finance. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, as will be seen in the estimates and elsewhere, the Ministry of Finance has the responsibility for ensuring that the salaries of public servants are paid, of managing the government's finances, of raising revenue through taxation and other revenue raising measures such as borrowing and asset sales. The Ministry of Finance has responsibility for a number of divisions, the budget division, which is a key division in the public service machinery, the budget division is responsible for receiving applications for the disbursement of funds from various ministries and agencies, reviewing these applications and making recommendations for releases or releasing funds on its own um, behalf. The Ministry of Finance also contains the Treasury Division, which is the division that actually processes payments and authorizes the writing of checks. The Ministry of Finance also has a number of statutory authorities and or state enterprises that report to it or are associated with it in some way. For example, the National Insurance Board, the National Lotteries Control Board, Caribbean Airlines, now the Exim Bank that used to be in the Ministry of Trade, that is now in the Ministry of Finance. First Citizens Bank is also associated with the Ministry of Finance, as is the Securities and Exchange Commission. The Ministry of Finance also has the responsibility to liaise and collaborate with the central bank in terms of ensuring that the country's finances are in order. The Customs and Excise Division is a very important division of the Ministry of Finance, uh, responsible for the collection of customs duties. And then we have the Investments Division, which is responsible for oversight over approximately 100 state enterprises that report to other line ministries. As I indicated, there are just about five or six state enterprises that report directly to the Ministry of Finance. But the Ministry of Finance also has the responsibility to oversee all 100 plus state enterprises and their subsidiaries. The Financial Intelligence Unit is also in the Ministry of Finance, as is the Insolvency Department. Honourable members, the question is that the sum of five billion eight hundred eighty-five million ninety-six thousand three hundred thirty dollars for Head 18, Ministry of Finance, stand part of the schedule. Honourable members, the sum of five billion eight hundred eighty-five million ninety-six thousand three hundred thirty dollars for Head 18, Ministry of Finance, is comprised of monies proposed for expenditure under the following subheads and items to be found in the draft estimates of recurrent expenditure, the draft estimates of revenue and expenditure of statutory boards and similar bodies, and of the Tobago House of Assembly, and the draft estimates of the development program. We shall now proceed to consider the draft estimates of recurrent expenditure. Subhead 01, personal expenditure. Member for Komuto, Mansanilla, item 001, General Administration. 
That's on page 77. 76. Okay. Under zero, item 001. Zero, zero, Yes. No, no, no. It will be under zero zero two. It's okay. Okay. Member Fisher, are you? Um, am I to understand we will deal with all, all the line items under zero zero one? Yes. So I can deal with anything with under zero zero one. You just say what they. No, under zero one. Because no, then you we are have dealing like, with. Then you have zero zero one. Under zero one, zero, zero, personal two, expenditure zero zero, zero zero one. General, General administration. administration. Okay, fine. All right. Then you could go to budget. Yes. Okay. Zero three. Zero zero three. So, if right. anyone else has seventy six. Yes. Madam Speaker, under zero zero one, personal expen personal expenditure zero one. What the. Given that there is an increase of $4 million, what are the changes in fiscal year 2018-2019 is expected? We are paid 76. No. We are under 001 general administration. Yeah. Just repeat the question. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Yes, Cousin, all right. Don't worry. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm a bit ahead of myself. Clearly. Okay. All right, so can we go on to item 002, page 77? This is budget division. Okay, zero, zero. item 003, custom, custom and excise, excise division. Um, this Member for Superior. Yes, thank you. Customs and excise. Yes. Um, what changes are to be expected in fiscal 1819? given the increase in the sum of $4 million. And I have a second question, but I'll pause. What changes are expected in fiscal 1819, given the increase here in budgeting of $4 million? What are we going to do with the $4 million? Customs and, customs and excise. Well, if you look at Sorry. the revised estimate for 2018, it was 56. Mm -hmm. The 2019 estimate is 60. It is yes. $4 million more, but it, there's no anticipation that there'll be anything extraordinary at customs that would create any issue. That's just an estimate. I'm sorry, I'm not hearing you, I remember. The 60 million is merely an estimate. Yeah, so what is the estimate? What is, it, what is the intention? We can't just budget numbers and don't know what, what it is we intend to do with it. Okay. <laughs> Since you insist. Yeah. I insist. Since you insist. I insist. It includes a provision for <clears throat> newly appointed customs guards and arrears of acting and increment payments to customs officers. It also includes a provision for increased contribution for national insurance due to recently filled posts of customs guards and customs officers. In terms of vacant posts, it includes a provision for filling 17 posts of customs guards and a 140 customs officers. As I said, it's merely an estimate. So we'll see how it goes as we go along. Yeah, we're not hearing you. <coughs> you may have to repeat it. I finish? I remember for Princess Stone. Thank you, Madam Chair. To the Honourable Minister. <coughs> Honourable Minister, with respect to the operations of Custom and Excise Division, the Auditor General in, the, in this um, last report, the most recent report, has indicated several inefficiencies in this particular department. Mm -hmm. Can you indicate, which also includes the issue of staffing, could you indicate with a decrease by 8.9 million whether or not the effective operations of customs and excise will be affected in any way and what sort of anticipation whether or not the recommendations of the Auditor General report was considered in terms of this particular decrease? That was a one-off payment of arrears. The reason why the provision is less 
in 2019 on that particular line item, which is overtime, is that there were arrears which were cleared off in 2018, which are not required to be carried forward to 2019. Oh, Ma'am, to the Honourable Minister, could the Honourable Minister categorically state whether or not under this particular line item, the management of the Customs and Excise Division, or whether or not the Auditor General recommendations were taken into consideration? Yeah, but um, Member, you have specifically referred to a decrease of 8.9 million. That decrease relates only to overtime. So I've answered you in the context of your question. You asked about the what is the reason for the 8.9 million decrease, and I told you there were arrears of overtime payments due, which were paid in 2018, which are not required to be paid in 2019. And therefore, if you have Mr. a question you... on 04, 05, 08, no problem, but ask it on the line item, please. So, Minister, you are saying you envisage based on this decrease from last year, that it will not in any way severely impact the operations of custom excise with the added duties this year? Is that essentially what because you're saying? Because it was yes. back pay that was okay. cleared off last year, which is not uh, occurring this year. Uh, on item uh, 00303, we noted that the estimate in um, 2018 was 51,920,000, but you only uh, spent 48,920,000. Um, what was the reason for the decline? Did you control over time, or was, what, what is, what's, the re what's happening there? Yes. You controlled over time. I've answered you. Member for Superior. Thank you, Madam. Um, can the, the member tell us the number of persons employed as of September 30, 2018, in, in, this, uh, in this department? In customs? customs well, I don't know if we have that information with us, but that would be easy for us to get and provide to you by tomorrow. Tomorrow? Mm -hmm. Madam, oh, still. Oh, to Thank you. On the same light item, um, Honorable Minister, can you indicate what type of duties require overtime in this particular instance? Excuse me? Um, if the Honorable Minister can um, indicate what type of duties require overtime. There are within the customs division a number of outstations at various ports of entry. The Customs and Excise Division is not confined to its administration building in Port of Spain. You have a number of ports of entry, both air and sea. And when customs officers, for example, are stationed at Piaco and an aircraft comes in at one o'clock in the morning, they would be on overtime. So overtime is an essential part of a customs officer's duties because of the fact that they are dealing with transportation, which does not have any association with normal working hours of eight to four. Boats and ships will come in at any hour of the night. Planes will come in at any hour of the night. So that's why overtime is required for customs and excise Thank officers. you so much. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. And, and it's precisely for this reason, um, we are asking the question, how will the, um, the division effectively manage its operation with a decrease in the sum of um, 8.92 Madam million? Speaker, I have answered that already. I get the impression the Honorable Member was not listening. That was a one-off payment for back pay in fiscal 2018, which is not required to be paid in fiscal 2019. I said that three times to the member for Princess Tom. Member for Kuva North. Thank you. Thank you, Madam, Madam Chair. I have um, Line item 08, vacant posts. Can the minister say how many vacant posts exist? Because I'm seeing an increase by 6.35 million for vacant posts. In answer to a question from the member for Siparia, 
I said that we will seek to fill posts of 17 customs guards and 140 customs officers. I do hope you're the last person to ask that okay, same question. Okay, don't get hot and bothered. I'm not hot and bothered. I, you, you seem rather bothered to me. The fact that I've pointed out you're asking the All same right. question members, already asked. Members, let's, let's, you know, just be very clinical about what we are about. Member for Karini East. Member for Karini East, yeah. yes? Minister, with, the, with, your, Minister, with your intention to form the Revenue Authority, which includes customs and inland revenue. There is a vote in, in each item, there's 003 and 004, for salaries and wages. How, if that revenue authority becomes a reality, how do you propose to manage the vote for salaries and wages in both these areas? What is the future for that? When you vote for it and the House approves it, We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. You don't have any clear idea. But well, we have to wait on you to support the revenue you authority. Any, you don't have any clue. No. All right. I'm a it would seem another dream again. Member for Separia. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, same, same items there. Customs and excise. Is there a policy governing the use of overtime? And if the answer is yes, can you describe briefly? What is a policy? A policy governing over time? Over time. I'll have to get that first. Um, what is the estimated number of persons, employees who work over time on a monthly basis? I'll have to get that for you. What type of duties require over time? I think you, you touched on that when you talked about reports. You'll get that too? Dealing with um, the transit of goods and people at various ports of entry. Sure. If, um, if it is that this is that overtime has now become a regular fixture within the service because of the size, because of flights, ships, and um, planes coming in all different hours and so on. Again, so the again I ask about. And also. I ask, please, sir, um, that the overtime policy is very important. Yes, I knew I said I'd get it for you. How many times will you ask me for it? But when you get it, I can't ask you anything anymore. I will try and get it for you by tomorrow. So can you defer it? I will try and get it for you by tomorrow. Yeah, but I can't. Members? That's your right. West. You can't. Okay, Member, I'm ask sure. members to be quite clinical having regard to what we want to achieve today, please. Uh, item 05, West. government's contribution to NIS. There is an increase from 4.5 million to 5.5 million. What is the justification for this increase in NIS? All right, I will forgive the Honourable Member for not hearing that we appointed 20 new customs guards recently. It's for recently filled posts, which are going to carry into 2019, which would not have been catered for fully in 2018 because they were appointed during 2018. Okay? I can live with that. Member for Miaru. Thank you very much. Um, Minister, just on the... the item of the um, the NIS. At, I, I heard before in one of your responses, you spoke about an additional 150 plus 17 additional vacant posts, and you've now added another 20 guards. Um, if you do quick calculations in terms of the NIS contributions, you're looking at a million dollars increase for NIS. That works out a little over $1,500 per person per week. That is if you, took, if you take those numbers based on what you said in terms of the new hires that are going to come in, um, that figure seems awfully high based on the, the highest classifications for NIS weekly. Can you give an account for that? Your calculations are wrong. <coughs> Could you um, educate me into the calculations? I'll give you a worked example tomorrow. Sure. Look out for it. Professor Peria? Um, still on customs and excise. Uh, how many posts are currently vacant? I'll give you that tomorrow. What is the classification of these vacant positions? I beg your pardon? What is the classification of the vacant positions? So uh, what I would undertake to do by tomorrow, I would circulate it, the okay. numbers of vacant posts and the actual posts themselves. 
Are these posts essential to the running of the division? The department? I, would, I would think so, yes. Then why is it the money is never used every year? 2018? Well, Honourable, the Honourable Member for Siparia is a very experienced parliamentarian and thank will you, know thank you, thank you and will please. know that the filling of public service positions is under the control of the Public Service Commission and not this minister. We cannot compel the Public Service Commission to fill vacant posts. All we can do is ask, plead, urge try to use moral suasion, but we cannot compel them to fill posts. So we, every year we put the provision and we make our best effort to persuade the commission to fill the posts. But it's not this minister who fills posts. Okay. And so you know that. For you. Has any needs assessment been conducted to determine whether these vacant posts are critical to the ministry? Has any needs assessment been done? These posts would have been approved when you were prime minister. Has any needs assessment been done? The, any needs assessment would have been done under your tenure. So none has been done under your tenure? The posts are already established. They, these I'm are establishment whether... posts that are on the establishment, on the estimates, have been there for years. Yes, so has, for years. Probably since you were in the Pandey administration. My question please through you, madam. Has any needs assessment been conducted? I am sure to that successive governments have done so for the last the 20 years. Does that the question be asked? And I know you're eager to get on, but let the question be asked and then you can answer, please. Superior, please ask. Has question. any needs assessments been conducted by your government, your present government, to determine whether these vacant posts are critical to the ministry? Minister of Finance. It's a sine qua non of the creation of an establishment post that it is justified? The answer is no. All that wrong, run around to say no. Okay, um, are we moving on? Item 004, Inland Revenue. Member for Naparima. Um, I'm, I'm, look, I'm looking at 01, salaries and cost of li living allowance, and I see an increase of $12 million. And in the context of the transitioning to a revenue authority, why would there be, and one would anticipate that uh, the, the Inland Revenue Division would be in a holding position pending the, the establishment of the revenue authority. In that context, why a $12 million increase in salaries and cost of living allowance? And in 21, contribution to group pensions, it's, it's only 10,000 or one at a time. I think the first question is why an increase in $12 million under zero one salaries and cost of living allowances? Yeah. That is a provision for outstanding increment payments and payment for persons acting in higher posts. Member for Naparima. Um, uh, item 21, uh, uh, 21, uh, uh, contribution to group pension daily rated workers. Given the fact that um, one may anticipate a, 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 a large number of daily rated employees uh, being terminated in the context of the revenue authority, is, isn't this figure, is this figure adequate to meet the potential needs of those who would be terminated uh, in the context of the Revenue Authority. I'm afraid I am um, able to make the connection between daily rated workers who would be terminated and a provision for pensions. If they are working, Minister, if they are working in the Inland Revenue Division and there's a likelihood, there's a likelihood that given the Revenue Authority that they may be terminated or transitioned, the, the question is, is this figure of $10,000 adequate to meet the pension needs of the, of, of, the, of the daily rated workers in the Inland Revenue Division? Again, as I said, I can't make the connection. But there's something you should know, honorable member, and I'm surprised that you are not aware. There is no daily rated pension at this point in time. So therefore, what is the meaning of this group pension? What is the meaning of this allocation? 
that is in anticipation of reaching an agreement with the majority union with respect to a pension for daily rated workers. Well then, why in, in 2018, or oh, in 2018 you had 10, in 2017 you had no provision, 2018 you had 10,000, so that it means not, this has been ongoing that for That is not a correct, you are not reading the documents correctly. Is it, this is not 2018 a bank Doral, Miami. 2018 estimates. You are reading the wrong column. There is a provision. This is not a bank in Doral, Miami. No, come on, come on, Minister, come on. 21, item 21. It, the government contribution to group pension daily rated workers. Is that not? You are reading the wrong column. This is not a fraudulent email. What, what nonsense is that? Um, I'm reading the right column. Uh, member, min members, Minister Finance, could you just add some clarification so that we could go on? I would expect honorable members who have received these documents on the 1st of October, which is about nine days ago, and who have been experienced members of this house now for at least three years in the case of the honorable member for Naparima, would know that the column that you have to look at, because you've gone through this before with this honorable member on numerous occasions, is the revised estimates. And you will see there is a zero expenditure there. So there was no expenditure for pensions. Can, uh, arises. You, we, you allocated, estimated, and I could read and I could see, 10,000 in 2018, which meant that you made a provision for Am I correct or not? What's the question? 10,000. So the question is, is the provision of 10,000 in 2019 adequate to your anticipated needs, pension needs, for daily rated workers? Simple question, yes or no? Obviously. Good. Right, Thank you. I move on. Member for Karani is. Minister, in your, in your allocation for 2018 for salaries and cost of living, you had estimated 92 million, and the revised estimate is 80 million, so you did not spend 12 million. In 2019, now you put back the 92 million. Um, could you account for what happened? What, what, why the 12 million wasn't spent and you're putting it back now? What you putting it back for? I answered that already. No. Where's the answer? You would have to check the hands up. Finance, I, I it is obviously finish. too much for the honourable member to listen and retain, which I, the words, the following words which I said just a few minutes ago, I don't know if the honourable member was asleep, that $12 million is a provision for outstanding arrears of increments and acting payments. There's a problem here with intellectual capacity. Clean it this year? Obviously, the word arrears means back pay. So, well, if it was arrears last year, why wasn't it paid last year? It's arrears accumulated from last year going into this year. That is obvious, member. Why I didn't pay it last year? <sighs> Madam Speaker. <laughs> Madam Speaker. The answer to the to member's question is the same answer as I answer to the other member. The additional 12 million is a provision for arrears of increments and payments for persons who have acted in a higher position. Those arrears will be settled in 2019. That is standard practice and would have occurred in every one of the five years that you were Minister of Education. So stop asking these kind of questions, please. It's clear? It's clear to you now? You wake up now? Okay. All right, so members, just you know, for um, our collective assistance, 
if members look at the classification of expenditure sub items, which is in the same draft estimates at the beginning, in those um, pages with the human numerals, certain explanations are given, so it may assist all members to refer to that, um, to help them craft their questions and answers. Okay, so we go on. Item zero, zero, five, Treasury Division, page 79. Item 008, Investments Division, page 79. Member for Superior. Um, the, there have been a number of instances where serious questions arise for the state sector, um, the state enterprises sector. Is this Investments Division sufficiently staffed to provide effective oversight of the state enterprise sector. Minister of Finance. We can always do better. And can you tell us how many persons are in fact employed in this investments division? We get that information to you tomorrow, but I'm told it's approximately 59. In what ways can you do better? Well, once the Public Service Commission fills the posts, no, I'm not speaking about filling up posts. Um, I asked you a question first, and you said you can improve. So I'm saying, in what ways can you improve? I just answered you. Once the Public Service Commission fills the posts, we'll so have more bodies can, in posts, so that you can improve. and we can always do better. Once you have more people, you do better. Really? Member Fataraki. Mr. Minister, on that same point, are you saying that if the Public Service Commission does not fill the post, that you are in no position to take any action to improve the quality of personnel required to supervise hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayers' money invested? No. You're not in a position to do anything? No, I said I'm not saying that. Are you... I'm aware. Are you empowered? Members, members... Could we just please confine our statements on either side to the matters before? Madam Speaker, I was asked a question whether I was in no position to do X, Y, Z, and I said no. That no was in the negative. It meant I reject that question. That's what that no meant. Has any analysis been done, Mr. Minister, of the skill sets and the professional competencies of the persons in the investments division now in relation to what have been described at several levels and committees of the shortcomings of the quality of supervision of the state enterprises? And have you in mind any program in order to improve um, the quality of such personnel so that we can get a better um, use uh, of, of state funds in, in these state enterprises? Yes. Meaning what b b by yes? You asked a question, I've answered it in the affirmative. So you, you asked whether we've done an assessment. You've asked whether we are going to try and improve the skill set to provide better supervision of the state sector. And I've answered yes. And what specific actions have you then taken, um, Mr. Minister, in order to uh, support what you have just said, yes? What specific actions have you taken? We have determined the number of persons that we need and the particular skill sets we need. And if we form the view that the Service Commission is taking too long to fill the establishment positions, we will approach Cabinet, as is normal, for the employment of persons on contract to perform the functions while we await the appointment of persons to the Establishment public service post. That's the standard procedure that has used, been used by governments for the 27 years I've been in parliament. Have, as, have you, are you, as the Minister of Finance, in charge of this very large segment of um, the operations of the government in state enterprise, are you satisfied that you are getting from these people the quality of supervision that you require, given 
what we have seen emanating when these um, state enterprises come before parliamentary committees and the really, really um, bothersome uh, kinds of discoveries that are being made. I am satisfied that the staff of the Investments Division go beyond the call of duty. Despite, despite um, the kinds of losses we are seeing, despite the kinds of inefficiencies we see, despite all of this, despite what took place at Petrotrin with ANV drilling and, and so on, that you are satisfied that, that the people you have there are doing the quality of job in terms of the supervision required and the, to make sure that, that we get value for money and that the efficiency and effectiveness of these investments are realized? Yes. Mr. Minister, I would not go so far as to be disrespectful to say I'm disappointed in your answer, but I am. That's not a question, Madam Speaker. That's a statement. Member, um, can we go on to Member for Superior? No, could I ask a question on this? Well, just one minute. I saw Superior. Is she, would you give way to... Yes, sir. Yes, Member for Carrie. I was Central. going to ask, in this particular investment division, um, Minister, uh, how... Yeah. How many employees do you have? You know, uh, Madam Speaker, it is very difficult. And I notice a certain habit on the part of the members opposite. One person will ask a question. The question will be answered. Then five minutes later, another member would ask the identical question and put forward a, a, a theory that that question was never asked before and never answered before. That identical question was asked by the member for Separia and answered. I'm sorry, Minister, I missed it. Yeah, well, that's Could okay. Could you help me? I, no, there are, 20, there are 18 of you. Suppose every single one of you asks the same question over and over. We'll be here on, for, until next year. The answer is approximately 59. That's the answer I gave to the Honorable Member for Separia. Okay, I'm sorry I, I missed it. But all of you all seem to be asleep. I'm sorry I missed it. The reason I'm asking that is that I heard you say just now, um, Honorable Member, that there are approximately 100 state enterprises. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And I note that there seems to be um, an interest in developing additional state enterprise. I heard that from the Minister of Works. Could you ask a question, please? Yes, and one, and I know that the NIF has been created and identified as a state enterprise. What, what I'm asking really is, are the 59 employees that you have, I imagine, some are at supervisory level, some are lower down. Is that adequate? And I understand that there are boards for each enterprise to keep the Ministry of Finance informed and on top of what's happening in the state enterprise sector. Okay. Um, Member, I believe that was the very first question exactly. in substance asked that was asked answered. under this head. That, that question was asked in substance, maybe in not as many words, but in substance. It was. I, I'm speaking to the changing nature of the state enterprise sector under the government. Member, as I said, in substance, that question was asked and answered. That took us down the line of could do, we can always do better. It was asked in terms of numbers versus to us. Okay? So I'm just asking for all of us in the interest of what we would like to achieve, let's all sing from the same hymn book. Okay? No, madam, it's, no? The, uh, it's on right. valuation division, not this one. Member Fumiaro, is that oh. all right? Okay, good. Can we go on to 009 Central Tenders Board? 
page 80, member for Miaro. Thank you again, um, Madam Chairman. Um, Minister, and I, I just want to ask this question, and I know uh, the response, I don't want to be anticipatory for the other sections, but for instance, 001, and you see the increases in salaries that are provisioned for vacant posts with incumbents. I just want to find out if the incumbents who are holding on to these positions, when you make these these um, increases, are there promotions or, or, or what you call confirmations um, guaranteed during the fiscal year when you make these, these allocations for those vacant posts with incumbents? Public servants are entitled to increments and promotions. No, no this is what I'm asking. But I'm telling you, it's an entitlement. So when the provisions are made, they're entitled for the, 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 the confirmations and no. the positions. Public servants are entitled to promotion and appointments. Mm -hmm. That is done by the Public Service Commission. What the Budget Division will do and the Ministry of Finance will do is make its best estimate of what will occur in the coming fiscal year based on historical trends and determine that perhaps in this year, X number of persons may be promoted, Y number of persons may receive increments, and they come up with this number. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, to the Minister, um, in line item 01, salaries and cost of women allowance, and the 009 as a subhead central tenders board, what would become of, of this head, the central tenders board, when the procurement regulation or the procurement office comes into full flight or in it is activated? That is catered for in the Public Procurement and Disposal of Public Property Act, which was piloted through this parliament by your government. And at the end of that piece of legislation, it states that the Central Tenders Board Act would be repealed. And what would become of the the, the, the employees in, in that item 01 relates to? That is also in the legislation, your legislation. I suggest you familiarize yourself with it. It was yours. The transitional provisions are all there. Perhaps you could ask the member for Carney Central since he piloted the legislation. Oh, it's his legislation, or it was yours. Mem member for Carney East. But there was no answer for, for it. Okay. No Is that a question so, or a statement? Item 010, Valuation Division, page. You have, yes, thank sure. you. Um, I know that the 2019 estimates are very close to the 2018 revised, and just about for the 2017. If it is, will the minister tell us? Oh, in other words, this being the same over the three years, with the proclamation, full proclamation of the of the new legislation. Um, I do not see here any decrease in your estimates, which, which gives me then the impression the fiscal 2019 will not see full proclamation. Is there a proclamation proposed date for the legislation? Statement. Like you said in fiscal 19. I did not say that. To the best of my memory. Your memory is defective. But tell us what Well, then said. tell us what, what it Go is. <clears throat> you want us tell already us stay here till tomorrow morning. Madam Speaker, morning. are there multiple questions coming at me? There was just one. But I, I'm hearing a noise to I, your I, I believe left. there are urgings, multiple urgings. Ah. I said, based on the information that we have received in the Ministry of Finance from the procurement regulator with respect to training and other preparatory work being done to allow the full proclamation of the act, that we expect that in the first quarter of calendar 2019, that the act can be proclaimed. That's what I said. Calendar 19. Yes, calendar as opposed to fiscal. Well, I will explain since others may not understand. January to March 2019. Member for 
Princess Dong. Thank you, Madam Chair, to the Honourable Minister. Line item 01. The increase of 1 million on this particular line Zero. item, and it was an issue that I raised earlier, and the Minister referred me later down. So I'm going to ask the question how would this increase um, affect the recommendations of the Auditor General report with respect to the valuation division on Chapter 5 of the Auditor General report? You'll have to be more specific than that. So is the Minister saying he is not aware of any recommendations of the Auditor General re report with respect to the valuation division? No, I'm saying I want better and further particulars. Okay, so the Honourable Minister is not aware of any staffing I'm challenges identified, by the, I'm I want uh, identified by the Auditor General? Madam Speaker, I cannot answer an obtuse question that refers to something else that may not even be accurate or truthful. I don't uh, accept right. anything so, members uh, say. Uh, I'll be very specific. Member, okay, so th therefore, if you maybe break down your question, you might advance us a little sure. further. Madam Speaker, the payment of salaries and cost of living allowances to officers permanent, acting, or temporary in established public service posts. The Auditor General report speaks about evaluation division in Chapter 5 and specifically refers of the inefficiencies in some of these same positions outlined whether they're permanent, acting, or temporary. There's an increase of one million here. We are asking whether or not this increase would have any impact in terms of the recommendations made by the Auditor General. It is either that, Madam, or the Minister is not aware of the Auditor General. Let the Minister understand, digest the question, and, and hopefully give us an answer that we can move on. They seem rather hot and bothered on that side. It is a provision for vacant posts. So therefore, Madam, the Honorable Minister is admitting that this does not address the recommendations of the Auditor General Report with respect to specific staffing issues in the Evaluation Division. I do not accept anything you are saying. I reject we, your assertion mm -hmm. entirely. Well, Minister, but you should have come better prepared hey, because hey, you that, get promising tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. One minute, one question. Member, member for Princess Town. Uh, 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 member. Your answers are irrelevant. Wow. All right. So can we go on? <laughs> member for Tabakit. Member, member for. Hon Honourable member Minister. Member for Diego Martin Notice. Member for Princess Town. Let's move on, please. Honourable member Minister. For Tabakit. Given that uh, you have. A lot of citizens in the country who express dissatisfaction and uh, are very often caught in conflict with the government over valuation of properties. Why is it that you have not um, placed some significant uh, money in val valuation division for the training and updating of the skills of valuation officers? I see nothing here for training. Well, you're, looking, finance. you're looking in the wrong place, which is not unexpected from your side. Look in the PSIP and you'll find it there. You haven't reached there yet, by the way. Member for Carney we'll Central? No? Okay. Valuations, yes. We see, we see what appears to be an increase in, for the valuations division. Um, what changes are you proposing to spend it, to spend that extra money you have no allocated? It's not an appearance, it's a fact. It is an appearance, you know, but... Madam Speaker, I can't deal with that. <coughs> it is an increase. Yeah. All right, so it is listed as an increase of 6.5, and I'm asking what the minister proposes this money be spent on, this extra money. So you are asking questions on line item 01, 03, 04, 05, 08, 27. All those line items all in one question? No, this, no, no I'm speaking of the valuation division. I am Remember speaking is, also oh, of the valuation division. 010. All right, so uh, if maybe I could just interject here. Remember for Superior? Yes, ma'am. If I, if I am correct, we are the six point five you are looking at is the total at the increase. end of the page. Yes. Which yes. Increase. Okay. Increase about six point something million. All right. So I believe what the Minister of Finance is saying 
is that the 6.5 is an aggregate of what appears it's a above it. Yeah. Yes, and therefore that's what he's asking if your question is really aimed at each of the subheads. Well, uh, what I was, the point I was making is that the $6.5 million increase yes. is an aggregate of, of increases. 03, 04, yeah. 05, 08, yes, 27. Sure, you're, you're, okay, let's do it another way if you want to do it line by line. It's not for me, the, the, I'm the asking you a question. The increase that has been read, and that's why I said it appears to be an increase, and that increase is shown one, uh, 03, 04, 05, um, where it is, it is, it is, it is allocated each year, and then in the revise, you don't spend it. So you look. That's why it's, it's just there in the book, and it's never used. Five million. What's your question? So the, so the increase of one point three, one point five. Right What's the question, one, please? What do you intend to do with it? If the honourable member would address her. Gaze to zero one zero zero eight vacant posts. Correct, which have to be filled by the Public Service sure, Commission. So, not spend it so we live in hope. Every year, so it's we not, live in hope it's that these posts will be filled. That's the point. It Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, it, it is a, an increase. We provide for vacant posts. And we try our best throughout the year to get the Public Service Commission to fill the posts. That is how it is in this government, your government, and all the governments before that. Thank you, sir. Given that the valuation division is now going, given then that this was just for the vacant posts each year put and not happening, what are you going to do to deal with all the work that is going to be given to the valuation division with the coming into force of the new law? Yes, property tax. Is that also under DP? If the Honourable Member had been paying attention, the Honourable Member would be aware that during this last 12 months, the Cabinet has approved the hiring of over 300 persons on contract to deal with the fact that there are so many vacancies for establishment positions. So we have moved aggressively <laughs> and proactively to hire over 300 persons on contract. Sure. So where would I find, please, through you, that line item on the devaluation division? I beg your pardon? Where would I find We are that dealing allocation? with page 80, yeah. head 18, yeah. 010, yes. valuation division, and the items here. No, you're saying you're bringing in When we get contract? to that, we'll deal with that. We're not dealing with that here. Okay. So which line item are you talking about? I'm speaking of none, sir. Thank you very much. Clearly? Yeah. Sure. You're speaking of no yeah. line item. Yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just uh, to add to uh, another question in relationship to the evaluation division. division. In CM08, the definition of the vacant post salary is cooler without incumbents, $5 million. When you go to the definition of the vacant post. It says to cater for posts which are vacant without incumbents, but which are critical to the operations of the ministry, department, or agency. So I'm asking the, the minister, is, what is happening in this valuation division that they cannot fill these vacant posts that are critical <coughs> to running the valuation division? Answered four times already. I do not intend to ask, answer the same question over and over and over. We've just begun. I have made the point that the filling of vacant posts is the purview. Madam Speaker, I am speaking. No, I can speak. No, you are disturbing me. You One minute, please. Member for Dego Martin is... No, member from Dego Martin, notice. Member for Dego Martin, for Port of Spain North, St. Anne's West. Member for Superior. Member for Superior, you might be being disturbed, but I am sure that also certain people to your left are talking also. And they're much closer to you. All right? Now, I want us to also put our brakes on where we're going. All right? I expect that the questions we're asking are all legitimate and sincere questions to be answered. Member for Pointer Pair, the question that you've asked has been 
answered repeatedly, all right, um, in terms of how hiring is done in the public service. And a supplemental question with respect to, if it's critical, what are you doing, has already been answered. answered. Well, I said answered. I didn't mean ask, asked, answered, okay? So I would ask members to please, I know it's difficult for us to keep focus and attentive because remember, we all have important business to complete, all right? I may start to think that we've been a little, you know, frivolous. And I'm sure we don't mean that. Okay? So let's go on. We're going on to, you know, Princess Tom? Okay. Right. So we are now at item 011, National Insurance Appeal Board Tribunal, page 81. Item 014. Financial Intelligence Unit, page 81. Yes. Member for Carney East. Bearing in mind the necessity for a strong FIU, the salaries of total of 1.7, 1, 1, 1, 1, Would the minister indicate how many employees that would cover, possibly for my calculation, possibly about seven or eight. And is that enough to staff a highly efficient FIU unit, thus rendering the unit almost ineffective? How many people are employed in the FIU unit? 35. Well, lowly paid. All right, thanks for answering. Member for point of mm. no. Item 017, Office of the Supervisor of Insolvency, page 82. Subhead 02, Goods and Services. Item 001, General Administration, page 82 to 84. Member for Karani East, uh, sorry, Shogona East. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chairperson. Might I be able to get some explanation as to line items 16 and 17, please, as to the substantial increase? So we have page 82 items. Like, yeah, page 82, and line 16 items and 16 and 17. Yes. There has been a substantial increase. And both line items. Minister Finance. It includes a provision for the filling of 12 posts in the IT unit, 13 posts in the tax policy unit, and 41 posts in the programming policy unit. And with respect to the training, is that sum of 3.3 increase, is that all local training, or does it include a percentage of foreign? Both. Now, could you say what is that percentage? Not at this time, but I'll endeavor to get that information by tomorrow. Thank you. Member for Superior. Thank you. Um, on the books, yes, and, books and periodicals, which is 11, I note there is a, an increase here for books and periodicals of $465,000. Would you kindly share with us account for the greater estimate of 465? And it's, it's, it's not a laughing matter, but I really would like to know what, because I'm interested. Because your previous estimates for 2018 were 50,000. Your revised was 84,000. And now um, we have an increase which takes to the 550. So would you have some idea of what it is, this extra 465? thousand that we spent on. I know it's books and periodicals, but being a highly intellectual ministry, we are always upgrading our skills. Mm -hmm. Would you be kind enough to share with us? The details you want to know what books, books we plan to buy? Yes. And what periodicals we plan to subscribe to? What do you plan to spend the four hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars? Do you on? wish to know which books we plan to buy? What, yes, sir. And what, what periodicals plan spend, we plan to subscribe to? Spend that information on will be provided item. tomorrow. Thank you. Member for Kumutaman. We do a lot of research. Member for Committee Commissioner Martinella. 
Thank you. Um, couple items, line item 10, Office Stationery and Supplies. Um, will a decrease uh, by 150,000 in Office Stationery and Supplies um, hinder the Office of the Supervisor? Page 82, item zero, item 10, Office. How many persons are employed um, in this um, division? Persons? Well, we under goods and services. Persons. Oh, okay. A book we, is we, not we a person. Them. Oh, no, no. I, I thought we um We under goods one. and services. All right. Yes, please, let's go on. Member for Princess Town. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, madam. Madam, to the Honorable Minister, line item 34 on page 83, under goods and services, general administration. The University Graduate Recruitment Program. Madam, we would recall that since 2015, the Honorable Minister gave us a long song and dance about Madam, the Graduate uni ask a University question. Training Program. Please. I see another one million is proposed for th this financial year, but nothing has been spent in 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, and again it's being proposed in 2019. Could the Minister tell us what are the challenges that have been happening with this particular light line item that they have been able to hire no one in the university graduate recruitment program in the three years that they have been in office. Minister Fines. That they have been able, have not been able to employ anyone. In the last three years, there were some issues with respect to the definition of the persons who qualify as graduates for recruitment. We have resolved those issues. What have you done, Minister, to resolve those issues in three years and four budgets? The issues have been resolved. One, can you give us what the definition is? And two, the assurance that this program, after four budgets and three years has passed, will be brought into effect in this financial year. As I indicated in earlier budgets, this is designed to help persons who graduate at the top of Agreed, the Minister, but so far it has helped no one. What's the question? Well, uh, the question is, what is the definition now? You have just indicated there was a challenge with the definition. That has been resolved. Right. Can you share with us what is the definition now? And give the assurance that it will be instituted in this financial year. Persons who graduate at the top of their class. And yes, it will be operationalized in this fiscal year. Honorable Minister, you are telling this committee that it took you three years, four budgets later, to come up with a definition to bring effect to this line item. Yes. All right. It's much like the Children's Member Life Fund. Shagonas West. Madam Chair, Shagonas. to the Honorable Minister, line item 16, contract employment. There is an increase of $12.7 million in, in the contract employment head. Could the minister indicate what is the nature of that contract employment? We're page 82, item 16. Madam Speaker, I answered this already, you know. I answered this question already, Madam Speaker. I really am reluctant to answer it again, you know. This is becoming a habit. Just, just one minute. Minister of Finance, I'll allow you one opportunity to bring some clarity so that we can go on. Head zero two. Subhead 16, contract employment. I said already, clearly and unambiguously, this includes a provision for filling of 12 posts in the IT unit. That was a question posed by the mm -hmm. member for Shogunas mm -hmm. East. Mm -hmm. I said that clearly, 13 posts in the tax policy unit and 41 posts in the programming policy unit. Madam Speaker, this is ridiculous. All right. And members are pretending that this question was not asked and answered before. Member for Superior. 
you on the 08 rent lease office accommodation and storage. Um, I note that there is a, an increase, an increase of um, 369. Where is it? Sorry, ma'am. Yes. Um, an increase of 465.5 million. Um, this is on the zero eight. Yeah, ma'am. I'm sorry. Depends. The, the, the ruler is uh, giving me a little trouble. Three sixty nine. Three sixty nine. Mm -hmm. Two twenty. Increase two twenty. Three sixty nine. Two twenty. Mm -hmm. Increase. Um, does the minister intend to rent, lease any new accommodation or storage spaces under this app? Yes. And would you kindly would you know which ones they are? Yes. Would you kindly tell us? Trade zone. Trade. Zone. Where is this? Same place you rented from. <laughs> well, then if it's There's new, only one trade zone in Trinidad Tobago, as zone. you well know. I'm oh, right. sorry, I it's, don't. It's a I place that is used for archival purposes, mm -hmm. has been used by governments for 20 years, including yours, trade zone. No, but you're saying this is a new, this is a new... Additional storage. Additional, so I wasn't renting it. Yes, you did. You rented that building. No, but you're saying this is something new. We're just renting more space in the same building that you rented. I'm trying to understand. I'm explaining. Additional it's the yeah. same building you rented. We're renting additional space in there. Thank you. Welcome. Has, can you tell us how many properties are leased or rented at this time? We'll get that information for you tomorrow. And the cost of each of I'm these told properties? I'm told it's two. Two? Yeah. Under this item? Yeah. Yes. And the cost for each? We'll give you the breakdown. Okay, further, how many storage spaces are rented mean, lease, which mean is what you that? said we did, and the monthly cost of each What lease. do you mean by that? Under this, this item. No, what do you mean by storage spaces? I said two. Sure. You're saying you're going to get two new storage spaces. I didn't say that. I, you asked me how many spaces are we renting. I said two. I said two. No, my madam, my first question was I noted that there was an increase. And what was the increase going to be applied for? For additional storage. That's the point. Additional it's not storage. It's not space. Okay. So what is the existing storage? You have two additional you're bringing. What is the existing and what is the cost of each space? Madam Speaker, I will try my best to repeat what I have just said. The ministry in this particular item stores its material at two locations. At one of them, we intend to increase the amount of storage space that we occupy. The question should have been, what is the, f the square area that you intend to occupy that would result in this increase? If you had asked me that, I would simply say, we'll tell you tomorrow. Okay, and the cost of that I already said we'll tell you the cost. Footage. You've asked me that three times, and I've said three times you'll get it tomorrow. I wait with bated breath. Member for Shogonas East. Thank you, Madam Speaker. May I, with your permission, return to line item 34? Just now. Line you, item... You and my, you. Just one minute, please. Word line wise. item 34? Sure. Yeah. We, we, it's still under... Um, yeah. Same yes. under the zero 02 yes. goods and um, could, If I recall correctly in the budget speech, one of the budget speeches that the minister um, presented to us very early, there was an allocation of $55 million for this item. I'd just like to find out how much of that $55 million has been utilized and how many persons, while he was, he was uh, finalizing the, the definition, how many persons, if any, were employed under that line item of graduate recruitment program. Madam Speaker, that question is out of order. There's no $55 million No, I am, I know, you didn't listen. You no, said you can't ask questions about no, the no, previous No, no, you're budget, not listening you know? to the, uh, the preamble I used I for the question. I would not answer any questions and, about a previous budget. And I'm saying that there was an, an, an item in the budget that made a 55 This budget? No, but let me just exactly ask the question. The point Could the minister then answer the question, of this, how many persons does he intend to hire for this allocation? under this project, this line item. Okay, so we're dealing with the million dollars yeah. this year. Yes, please. That information will be provided tomorrow. Member for Kamuta Mansanella. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Um, line item 21, repairs and maintenance of buildings. Can the Honorable Minister indicate um, the increase of 500,000, making it 5.5 million, to outline the scope of works that will be required um, 
to repairs of what buildings or maintenance? It's ongoing upgrade and maintenance to the finance tower, Eric Williams Finance Plaza, Independence Square, Port of Spain, Trinidad. Okay. Member for Point of Pair. Thank you, Madam Chair. To the Minister, line item 58, medical expenses. In 2017, 19,000 19, was actually spent. 2018, yes, estimated 50,000, nothing was spent. But in 2019, you have an allocation of $600,000 in medical expenses. What is anticipated in respect to medical expenses for this year? We'll get back to you on that. When? Tomorrow, today, to what? Tonight? Member, yes, what member? When you say get back to me, when? I, I, I understand that to be um, a very casual way of saying I will respond tomorrow. Quite, a, quite correct. Yes. Okay. Member for Naparim. Sure. Member for Karani Central. Yes. Thank you. Um, Minister, you indicated that um, on a merit basis, graduates would be recruit, recruited from the top of their class. Could you indicate whether that has been determined, whether it's first class or a second grade point, or uh, whether that has been determined, basically. The member for County Central has a very interesting way of embellishing what I say. I didn't no, you say just said top of the class. I, I did know. not say on a merit basis. Those are your words, not mine. Well, I said this is for persons who graduate at the top of their class. There's only one top. Same way, there's only one bottom. Top means top. First. Does that mean first class? Then? They, it means they come first. I, I think the question has been answered. Okay, member for Princess Town. Thank you, madam. Madam to the Honorable Minister, line item 62. In the 2017 actual 405, 2018 revised estimates 500,000, but the estimates for 2019, 1 million, an increase of 500,000. Could the Honorable Minister indicate what would have accounted for such a large increase in promotions, publicity, and printing? Two? 62, yeah. 62. Yes, sir. That's all Page 83. There's a growing and increasing need to counteract the fake news that emanates from the UNC. So you're going to be putting out fake news as well, if that is what you're saying? No. We are counteracting your fake news. Oh, you mean your fake news? Member no. for Karen your, Central. Your fake news? You have yeah. another question? I think, I think we got members? <laughs> members? <laughs> Member for Karen Central, do you have another question? Ma'am, I, I didn't feel that the minister answered my question. Excuse I really me. wanted to understand. Members, I... All right, um, it is now 4.59.51. I therefore, I think it was agreed we'll take tea at five o'clock. I think now is a good time to take it. Maybe we will all, having got some sustenance, will be able to endure this process. This meeting is now suspended. We will resume at five. <laughs> We'll resume at 5.30.